I've sometimes heard people say that a movie is half picture, half sound, and half music. What do they mean by that? All right, this is the second diary entry of Changelings. We've got, uh, what, 89 more to go. Day two, day two, everybody. Big announcement, big announcement. A, a friend and coworker of mine has agreed to write the music for the Changelings sizzle that I'm, I'm going to be putting together for the crowdfunding campaign. And uh, he is uh, the lead member of a band called Interstellar. So technically Interstellar is going to be creating this music. I've worked with him for many years and I'm not just blowing smoke up his ass or anybody's ass. That's gross. So I'm not fibbing. I know that doesn't take back what I just said, but I want to amend. I'm not fibbing. Uh, his band's really great. So if you, if you like hard metal rock, Interstellar's a pretty cool band to check out. And uh, Jason's agreed to compose a two to three minute piece. In exchange, I want to shoot something for his band. Very excited about that. And I think it's important to talk about why people sometimes say that movies are half picture, half sound, and half music. Because music as a tool is designed to telegraph what you want your audience to feel. Um, it's a really huge cheat, if you will. Uh, it's very manipulative, and I love it. But it, it's cheap sometimes, and sometimes what you'll get is a mediocre movie with an amazing soundtrack. Garden State. But, you know, who am I to judge? I, I think that dividing a film into three halves, if you will, of 50% picture, 50% sound, and 50% music is because the whole is greater than some of its parts, right? So if you would just imagine a scene that's just, I don't know, a shot of waves or something, and then you add sound to that picture, it's something bigger than what it was before. It's still the ocean, but now you're hearing it. It's a, it's a whole new sensation. And then when you add music, it's affecting different parts of the brain. It's making you feel things that you wouldn't necessarily feel otherwise. So it's kind of a cheat in that way, but it's also an enhancement. It's that third part that it's not, it's, it's a third part. It's so important. It's so overpowering in a scene that, um, when you add, when you add a soundtrack, when, when you add music and you're telegraphing how the audience is supposed to feel about something, it's a much more powerful experience. So it's not quantifiable into thirds or quarters or even half, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, right? You can take a mediocre scene and turn it into something award-winning with the right piece of music. Music is really that powerful. And when we're talking about the whole being greater than the sum of its parts, that's what I'm thinking about when I am building a soundtrack to listen to is that, you know, this is how I imagine the whole experience to be feeling. And I encourage anybody who's writing anything to do that. And to, and if you're, especially if you're a filmmaker, to really consider the tone long in advance before you ever actually write anything really. When I'm thinking about ideas is I will think, I'll listen to music and I'll think about how this music makes me feel and how I want to try to replicate that visually. And so it's a really big inspiration for me. I think that with Interstellar on board, this music is going to be just the right kind of hard hitting for the sizzle that I want to create. I want to know the music long before I ever shoot this thing because I know that when I plug it in, it's just gonna have that feel that I've been thinking about. It's just gonna have that unknown, unquantifiable thing, the, the other half of the three halves. I think about film like that a lot, that it's not, it's not just these little constituent pieces. I mean, I, and maybe that just goes without saying, maybe I'm the idiot in the room here, but I, I like to think of music and sound and picture as being indivisible. And when I think about this track that Interstellar is gonna write, I get very excited about it, because. I know that it's going to make the piece better. The movie Changelings, I've always conceived of it as being a bit quiet on the musical side. But as I, you know, as I visited Frasier yesterday, now as I'm just exploring the world of the tear and how I want this to feel, because I, you know, I'm not just making Changelings, I'm building a whole world here that Changelings exists in. What is the tone of the piece? When I say that music is a cheat and that it telegraphs how you want, you know, how you want your audience to feel. It's manipulative. What it's really doing is it's sort of enforcing a tone over the piece. Um, and tone is, I don't even know how to quantify how much of that is of your film. 90%. I mean, without the right tone, it doesn't matter. I mean, there's all these pieces with m filmmaking, like if the sound is bad, it doesn't matter. If 
the picture's bad, it doesn't matter. But I mean, really with tone, you screw the tone up and you screwed everything up. Even if the script is really good, if you just can't nail that tone down, um, sorry. So with Changelings, and why I think that Interstellar is actually a really great choice. His music's very dark, and I want the soundtrack to be very dark. And so I think that when we can collaborate to create something that really fits in the universe, at least for the sizzle, for Changelings, uh, for the short film itself, I'm not sure if Interstellar will be doing the music. I would love it if they did. Uh, we'll see how the sizzle goes. Me personally, I listen to, you know, I create a soundtrack as I'm writing a piece or as I'm going to make something, I will create a soundtrack for that. You know, I did it for I Love You. I did it, I've done it for all my scripts. I'll just have the songs that I think have fit the tone and that really helps me get into things. But now that I'm moving forward with making Changelings, it's even more imperative to have a soundtrack to really keep the tone on track. Does that make sense? So like, you know, I wouldn't put, I don't know, Christmas music in the playlist if it wasn't gonna be taking place in Christmas. That would ruin the whole tone of it. So. I'm creating a soundtrack for The Tear. It's on Spotify, I'll put the link down below. I'll be creating the playlist for The Tear as I build the world of Changelings and The Tear. I've got Johnny Greenwood on the soundtrack from the album You Were Never Really Here with Joaquin Phoenix. Really cool movie, I've, I've gotta watch it again, but I, I loved how gritty it was. It's a film that I wanna explore more for Changelings. I'll be writing up a, um, a lookbook, if you will, so, and I'll be using examples from You Were Never Really Here. And I think also musically, I'll be pulling from that film. Uh, it's a, just a pretty spectacular movie in many ways. And I, I need to watch it again because I felt like I was distracted when I watched it. And it didn't hit me, I think, like it should have. So I'm going to watch it again. Uh, I've got um, Reborn from a Colin Stetson from the movie Hereditary. Now that, I think that I want to remove that from the soundtrack. You know how you, when you're working out, you have your workout track and you get that one track you thought was gonna be great, but then you know, you're on the treadmill and then it turns on and just ruins everything. That's, as much as I like the soundtrack, I think it might be ruining the ensemble here. Fog by Yellow Ostrich, very haunting song. You should check it out. Fog by Yellow Ostrich, really beautiful. And the lyrics fit Changelings perfectly. So one dream would be to be able to get that song for the movie. Uh, whether it be the short or the feature, but that's a great song. So, uh, what else? We've got a Soap Percussion. I, I chose a film called Water. Very creepy, very eerie track. I like Soap Percussion. Very experimental percussion music or percussive music. I used to be a drummer. I was in a band, you know, played in clubs and stuff. So I love percussion. And so it was just very experimental, very interesting stuff. My last two favorite tracks on here are David Wingo, Take Shelter soundtrack, just a super eerie soundtrack. I highly recommend listening to that soundtrack. And I believe it's got uh, Ben Nichols, the director's brother, did one of the tracks on that. Actually quite good. And then Kill Them All by Magic Sword. I love this track. It, oh, it's such a powerful, triumphant kind of song. It's just kick ass. It just really gets me pumped to, to keep writing Changelings. And so, yeah, so for me, not only am I creating this, this playlist for writing, but I'm gonna carry this playlist all the way through making the short film and the feature, should that come to pass. But it's something that I wanna carry through so that I can keep the tone of the film always in the back of my head. Like, with this song, that would be, the, you know, when I think of scenes, I think of this song, the song would be amazing in this scene. I wanna be able to keep myself in the headspace of Changelings. And one of the ways I do that is, is with music. And uh, so anyways, check out the playlist below. Uh, I am, um, I'm adding to it all the time. And uh, yeah, if you like cool, synthy, ethereal, but also kind of really scary, terrifying music, this is gonna be a cool playlist for, uh, for you to follow. Anyways, that's it. Have a good day, guys. Talk to you tomorrow. All right, catch me tomorrow. That'll be day three of the 90 day marathon for the Changelings crowdfunding campaign vlog. Let me know what you think. Do you think of music like this? Do you think of film in this way? Do you see these pieces as being indivisible or being greater than the sum of their parts? I mean, how do you feel about it? Anyways, let me know what your thoughts below. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do here, hit that subscribe button, find me on Steam, and support me on Bitbacker. For only $2 a month worth of Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash, you'll get exclusive content, early access to everything I do, and access to my private Telegram channel, where you can ask me any question you like about the process of making changelings with cryptocurrency. All right, see you there.